In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can use the Nernst equation to calculate the electrode potential for a half cell under non-standard conditions. So let's jump straight in. If I were to look up the standard electrode potential for a half cell, um, let's say our half cell is copper. So we can write it as such, copper ions gain electrons to form copper metal. And the standard electrode potential for this half cell is given in the books as plus 0.34 volts. And the setup for determining this standard electrode potential, and I know it's standard because we've got a little bus stop sign here, would be to have a half cell where I've got copper ions in solution, and they would be at 1.0 mole per decimeter cubed in contact with my copper metal strip. And um, we're working at atmospheric pressure 298K. And in this case, to um, determine our standard electrode potential, we'd link our copper half cell with the standard hydrogen half cell. When we're talking about non-standard conditions, generally speaking, what we're talking about are solutions where the concentration is not 1.0 mole per decimeter cubed. So, for example, what would happen if we decrease the concentration of copper ions? Well, we can look directly at our half equation, and we can use Le Chatelier's principle to make a judgment on that. So if I decrease the concentration of Cu2 plus in this system, then the position of equilibrium will shift to the left. By shifting to the left, my system is producing more electrons. Electrons are negatively charged, so I would expect the electrode potential to be less positive. So a lower concentration of copper ions, a less positive electrode potential. The Nernst equation allows us to actually calculate a value for that under these specific conditions, rather than it just being a qualitative judgment. The Nernst equation looks like so. E equals E standard minus RT ZF Lun concentration of the reduced species over the concentration of the oxidized species. Let's take a minute to pull that apart. So E is our non-standard electrode potential. So that means that the conditions have changed, either because we've changed the concentration of the ions in our system or possibly the temperature. E, we know, is the standard electrode potential. R is the gas constant, which we know to be 8.314 joules per Kelvin. Per mole. T is the temperature in Kelvin. Z is the number of moles of electrons as per the half equation. And F is Faraday's constant, which is essentially the charge carried by one mole of electrons. And that's 96500 coulombs per mole. How do we determine which is the reduced and which is the oxidized species? Well, if we go back to our half equation, we'll stick with this half reaction. Copper is our reduced species. It has its electrons and the copper 2 plus is the oxidized species. It's lost electrons. If we are working with a half equation that's written as such, so our ion gaining electrons to form our metal or our reduced species, 
then we could also write this as ln concentration of the products over concentration of the reactants. And sometimes we see it written like that. I'm not so keen on that um, because it depends entirely on the way that the equation is written and it might not be the right way around. So reduced over the concentration of the oxidized. Now, to make life nice and simple, our reduced species is a metal. It's a solid. Solids don't have a concentration, so we can declare that to be unity. So the concentration of our products in this case is simply one. Okay, we declared qualitatively that if we were to reduce the concentration of copper ions in our half cell, then our electrode potential under these non-standard conditions would decrease. It would become less positive is a far better way than saying decrease because sometimes we're dealing with negative standard electrode potentials. So it become less positive. Well, let's see if that's the case. Uh, we'll drop our, let's say, should we drop our concentration of copper ions from 1 to 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed? Well, what would be the non-standard electrode potential? Well, we know that the standard electrode potential for copper is plus 0.34 minus RT. Well, R is 8.314. We can say that we're running this system at 298K. How many moles of electrons are transferred? Well, if we go back to our equation, it's 2. So Z is 2. And we know that Faraday's constant is 96,500. And that is multiplied by ln. Concentration of copper is 1, it's unity. And of our copper ions in solution, so that's our concentration of Cu2+. And that is copper. And when you plug that into your calculator, it comes out to be plus 0.33 volts. It has indeed become less positive. Only by a little bit, but we haven't changed the conditions of our cell by very much at all. But it has become less positive as predicted. Let's take a look at one more example. In this case, it's going to be the half cell between iron 3 plus ions and iron 2 plus ions. And when we look up the standard electrode potential for this half cell, it is plus 0.77 volts. So what would we predict to happen if we increased the concentration of iron 3? Well, the Chatelier's principle would suggest that position of equilibrium would shift to the right. This uses up electrons. So our non-standard electrode potential should be more positive than plus 0.77 volts. Well, let's put some numbers in and see if that is the case. We will take our iron 3 plus concentration to be 2 mole per decimeter cubed and our iron 2 to be 1 mole per decimeter cubed. So that's a shift away from the standard conditions. On the standard conditions all ions in solution would be at 1 mole per decimeter cubed. So E E naught minus RT ZF ln reduced over oxidized in terms of concentrations. The reduced species in this case is the, why isn't my pen working? Why isn't my pen working? F, 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 there we go, Fe2 plus. And the oxidized is the Fe3 plus. So that becomes E is equal to plus 0.77 minus 
8.314. We'll say the temperature is room temperature, 298K. Uh, Z is 1 in this case, and Faraday's constant doesn't change, it being a constant, multiplied by the ln of 1 over 2. Stick some brackets around that. And when we plug that into our calculator, it comes out to be plus 0.788 volts. It has indeed become more positive. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together we can do this.